Welcome to the Swim Swam podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining us today, she is a four-time Olympian, nine-time world champion. She has so many medals, I couldn't even count them all. Uh, But most recently, she is retiring from a long and illustrious career in the pool. Today, we have the pleasure of sitting down with Femke Imskirk. Thanks for having me. to sit down and chat with you about this super long uh, career that you've had in the water. Um, But first off, you're fresh off the ISL final where you were a champion with Energy Standard. Um, What Coming off of your fourth Olympics into that ISL season, what made it the right time for you to to finally say, okay, I'm going to go through with ISL, what happens there happens, and then I think I'm going to be done with competitive swimming. Mm, so before Olympics, I didn't want to think about retirement because I didn't want to feel the pressure at the Olympics. Like this is my last uh, race. This is my last score. Like I didn't want to have the, have that pressure and I was doing pretty good. Uh, so I didn't think I was not thinking about retirement, but then after Olympics, that took a lot of me, uh, I was super tired. Um, just stayed in my bed for one week and a half and just went out to eat some food and then back in it it was so weird like I was so tired and then I saw so soon um and I was just still so tired and a lot of things happened in my private life as well so I just called James to ask him if I could join the team a little later so I had like a little bit more air and uh he was kind enough to uh to give me that space but in these weeks I I was thinking because I I still went to practice, but I was just didn't feel the same. And uh, uh, it took me a lot of effort to go to the pool and do my sessions. And and then I just felt like something changed because I always love to go to practice. And even if I'm in the pool, then it's fine. You know, sometimes the way to the pool is is the hardest part. And then when I'm there, I'm happy. But I was just playing these games in my head. Like, okay, if you do this set that you can skip once one round of the kick set you know I was like (laughs) making all these deals and uh, so I thought like okay mm, I'm gonna feel at ISL in Naples if I if I just ask myself the question I'm gonna miss this or if if I'm happy if this is okay if this finished and then I felt in Naples no it's fine if, if this is if this is it And then I saw was in Eindhoven, so I thought that would be a great way to um, have my family and friends on the stands and just say goodbye in the pool where I've trained uh, the last uh, seven years. So, but then the audience didn't, was not allowed, but still it was nice to end it in Eindhoven. Yeah. So that was the idea actually. Yeah. I mean, that is super cool that it ended up being in Eindhoven that you got to have that you know, ceremonious kind of goodbye to swimming. Um, when you were training between, you know, after the Olympics between ISL during ISL, uh, were you, was that just by yourself or you, were you with the team as well? No, I did it by myself. So, uh, my coach, Marcel Wouda, he retired as well as a coach, uh, straight after the Olympics. Hmm. So I was, uh, I was training on schedules from, um, uh, Patrick Pearson. He's now the head coach in Eindhoven. So he made schedules for me and then I would just go on my own. Sometimes I would uh, uh, go to the pool uh, in Eindhoven with my team. And sometimes I would train uh, in the pool of Johan Kenkhuis. Uh, He's a former Dutch swimmer and he's a good friend of mine. And he has his own pool. It's called the Swim Gym. And he he was so kind for me to just offer some pool times and uh, not as early in the morning. So he made it a little easier for me to, to get some practices done. Do you, so, so you were swimming by yourself, um, and you know, kind of training by yourself, getting ready for the ISL. Then when you were around people again, or when you were training around the team again, did that make a difference for you at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so much harder to do it on your own. And, um, no. So when I went to Eindhoven, I think it was on the 8th of November, I joined in with a team uh, of energy standard and it's so much easier to just join the group and not you know, sometimes just go behind someone uh, and not, not pull the set. And 
yeah, that made a big difference. Yeah. And so then you, you were in Hinoven. Can you take me through your experience of those ISL playoffs and just what was, was the goodbye as you had expected? Was it better than expected? What, what, what was it like to, to know that it was your last competitions? Um, well, because it took so long, like it was like one month we, we stayed in Eindhoven. So, uh, I, I kind of, and towards the end, I was really ready to, that this was the goodbye because it took quite long. So I felt in those weeks uh, and also with Naples, I had a, a lot of time to reflect and to really uh, feel that this is going to be over. So I think for me, it was the right way, even though it was sometimes a bit hard because I felt less motivated in practice, but I still wanted to swim fast. So in the first, <laughs> the first competition, uh, I was not so happy with my results and I got a bit angry. And then I just realized that uh, these are my last competitions and the ISL is not the competitions that going to make or break my career. And when I just relaxed a little bit about it, I, I, I started to swim a lot faster and I, and I really enjoyed it. I was not looking at the times as much as I did in the beginning uh, matches of ISL. And um, no, so I was really uh, enjoying it. And the first uh, play of matches was 12, 13 November, if I'm not wrong. And uh, we knew that um, the Dutch government is going to uh, put stronger, uh, stricter restrictions. So I just called some family, like, if you want to see it live, like this is your last chance. So that was the last with full audience. Uh, so after that, I was a bit sad because I knew it was going to be my last competition. I thought it's not going to be any audience. And then um, uh, still some friends and my family uh, were allowed to, to see my last race. So, and it was nice that we won the championship. So everyone's in a very happy mood. And uh, so it went from less than expected than better than I expected. <laughs> That's a, that's a nice turnaround. And also it seems good to go from less to better than the yeah. other way around. Right. Um, yeah. so, so like you said, um, you ended on ISL, which wasn't like the make or break of your career, right? It's not like ending on an Olympics where it's kind of like this pinnacle of, of sport or, or of athletics. Um, did that feel good to you did that feel correct to you and especially like you said to go out as, as an ISL champion um, and as a team champion of something that's a lot newer to our sport than say a world championships or an Olympics um, how did that feel for you yeah it was definitely great to uh, to end it that way because um, I feel a lot, a, a lot less pressure uh, for example than Olympic Games and maybe that's also because it's quite new and it's uh it's with teams and you can hide a little bit behind the superstars. I mean, if I, uh, I was not swimming so many individual events, so maybe that makes me a little less stressed uh, for the team. And I know I'm always uh, uh, sharp for a relay. So uh, that made it a lot easier. Yeah. But I think, yeah, if I would know that the Olympics were my last race, that's why I didn't want to say it uh, back then, but I think maybe in the back of my head, I already knew, but I knew for sure it's going to be my last Olympics because I didn't want to do number five. Like uh, I needed, no, that, that was already too, a bridge too far in my head. <laughs> <laughs> even, even only three years away, you knew that that was, yeah, that was I it. know, but I think a lot of people forget how much uh, effort this extra year cost a lot of people like I felt tired from within my bones almost and mm -hmm. um it took a lot out of me so I, I I'm I'm totally happy to just uh, uh say goodbye to the sport then not not wait two and a half years uh, for Paris I'm going to be in Paris but as a spectator <laughs> yeah um let's talk about that extra year. Um, because you know, it's like a, a lot of people felt it in a lot of different ways. Right. And I think, especially for those who had been to an Olympics already, or who kind of knew what the deal was, or ha had had a lot of experience in their career that I think that hit them pretty hard because th that extra pressure was, 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 there was another year added on. Right. Um, what being so far into your career and maybe like you said maybe knowing in the back of your head that this was the last olympics for you um how did you handle that extra year well i think i 
uh, I actually benefited from from the extra year. Um, I felt like my shape was was going uh, stronger and stronger. Um, and I, I don't know, like it, it was like if you sign up for a next uh, uh, contract of your dedication towards Olympic Games. So I felt like, do I really want this again? <laughs> And I, I felt really strong after the news, uh, the Olympic Games were postponed and I was very eager to uh, to do this for one more extra year. And yeah, so I felt like, yeah, I really want this. So that, that was nice to feel within myself. And um, of course I had like a hard period because it, it asked so much from your discipline and your motivation. And But I think that's where my experience really helped me because I knew it's gonna take a. Uh, it's gonna be a long time, so I told myself, okay, don't jump in too hard and try to do all these dry lands like 100%. So I kind of built in slowly because I knew I had so much time, and I think this really saved me because normally I would be the person that would jump in straight away and try to make all these training sessions, and I really used these three months uh, of strong lockdown to just yeah relax a little bit more and not put too much pressure on the on the training of course i did swim and i did weights and i did cycle and all that kind of stuff but uh i, I took it easy on myself and i think that really saved me because towards uh tokyo i felt very motivated i feel like that is a wisdom that comes with age <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That yeah, I mean that hearing you say that makes so much sense and seems uh, such a logical thing to do, especially coming out of that the, that period and seeing what worked and what didn't work for different people. It seems like taking a bit more rest and easing into training, like you said, seemed to work for a lot of different athletes. Um, did you, once you got back into training and got back into pool, were, were you just as motivated? Did you feel pretty good about that? I was motivated, but uh, so I was three months in the States with my ex-husband. And uh, so I was tr training uh, with a stretch court. I had no, uh, I had no like long pull uh, to my uh, availability, but uh, in the end, like the last four, four weeks or three weeks, I had, it was a very nice guy who had like a private pool and it was uh, 25 yards. So then it, it started to look a little bit more like uh, real swimming. Where so at? uh in range to mirage where in range to mirage it's uh it's near palm springs oh that sounds great yeah yeah it was amazing like he, it was very funny actually because uh i made like um small videos for dutch television and there was a dutch guy who saw this uh item on dutch television and then he had a friend in range to mirage and he saw that i needed a pool so he called the guy and he said, yeah, there's a Dutch uh, swimmer and she needs a pool. Can she train with you? And then we all came in contact. And so we went from, <laughs> from Amsterdam to Range Mirage. And then, yeah, it was, it was so nice that, that they, that he, wow. Bob, his name is Bob, that he uh, allowed me to swim in his pool. Yeah, it was amazing. And, uh, but when I came back, um, I got like a shoulder injury. I think I was not used to all the dry land stuff that I was doing. And uh, my shoulder was always a bit of a problem since 2016 or so. So when I came back, that was coming back. And that was very annoying because I was doing my shoulder exercises every day. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought like, oh, I did that for nothing. <laughs> so it took me a while to get into it. Uh, but then when I, once I got it back, then I felt uh, I was growing into my shape and strength and speed. Yeah. So, so then just heading into that last Olympics, you have the experience, you, you swam your races there. Do you feel pretty fulfilled with that being your fourth Olympics and maybe expectations you had heading in? And again, with that fifth year, um, you know, once the dust settled for you and your events, did you feel good about it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm very proud how I swam at Olympics. Uh, I came from, uh, from afar and, uh, in 2016 was like a big deception for me, uh, how I swam and how the ambience wa was in our team. Like I have no good memory about, uh, Rio. So I'm very happy that I have good memories from Tokyo and that it like fade away that bad memories I had from the previous Olympic games. And, um, 
like my only goal actually uh, for Tokyo was that I felt free behind the blocks uh, because I know when I feel free, then I swim the fastest. And so I basically just wanted to enjoy myself and feel free. And, um, and I'm very proud that I did my fastest races in the final. I almost swam a PB. I, I didn't swim that time for six years. So yeah. And of course I dreamed of a bronze medal uh, uh, heading in, but uh yeah, I was close, but not, yeah, you know, it's, it's sport. And I, I know when I touched the wall, I knew I didn't make any mistakes. I felt free. I was happy. Uh, I was eager. So, I mean, then I just, you just have to accept what the, what the uh, outcome is. And uh, I totally accept it. So. It's a, that's a great philosophy. And I feel like hopefully other athletes can hear that and um, realize it's not always about medals, right? It's, it's, it is about performance. And like you said, feeling free, that's, that's really beautiful. Um, yeah, there's, there's been so many medals I won and I was so angry that I didn't swim a PB or that I didn't enjoy it. And I, I thought like such a waste of time. And that's a big lesson I had after Rio. I just also signed a contract with myself again and said, uh, I'm never going to exit the water unhappy again. Um, and, uh, of course, sometimes I'm not happy with the result, but like feeling unhappy about a result that I put so much effort in. Uh, no, that's uh, something that I just didn't want to feel ever again in my life. And uh, I think from that, yeah, it's, it's, it's just makes it a lot lighter just to be happy. And I'm, I'm so proud that I made the final with those amazing women because this, that final was stacked. And uh, uh, yeah, it was, it was a beautiful experience. Yeah. Uh, for you personally, what do you feel like was so unpleasant about your Rio experience in 2016? Again, that was your third Olympics. You had had, you know, you'd done it before you'd had experience. So why was that the one that, you know, you walked away from so unhappy? Uh, well, first of all, I was, uh, I was like overtrained. Uh, so my, I felt like I slept enough, but my body was just very fatigued. Um, so going into Olympics, knowing that in the back of your head, you always uh, keep hope. It, I mean, it was just, no, it's not enough. So I was uh, away from a form that I uh, should have been. So that's, that's the hard part. But also in our team, uh, in the Dutch team, there was a lot of, um, how can I say this? Uh, yeah, just bad energy. Like... Um, there were a lot of conflicts uh, between coaches and staff and managers and and this really um, yeah it, it like the team sucked it up like all this negativity and you could feel it all around there's just not so many people that uh, that were happy with those games uh, except of course the open water swimmers but they were not really in the same place uh, and a few others that, that swam really well. And that was like a happy experience, but I, I know there was one girl and, and she told me it was her first Olympics. And she said to me, well, I don't know what you guys were talking about because this is not fun at all. And it really broke my heart because Olympic games is, is something so special. And, and, um, like even, even if you don't fulfill your dreams, it's still something to be very proud of. And, uh, so yeah, it's just, I'm very sad for those person who had just one opportunity to go and it was, yeah, it happened to be Rio and our team vibe was not good at all. So, um, but we, we managed to change it one year later and it was such a big difference. And in uh, Budapest, we, uh, we, as a team, we did a lot better and uh, yeah, it's like, felt like we could breathe again. Yeah. Hmm. That it, <laughs> I'm sure that was a great feeling. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, Budapest was a lot better than Rio. Yeah, team spirit wise was amazing. Yeah. So obviously you haven't been retired for that long, maybe a few days or a week or two. But um, you know, looking back on your career, I'd I'd love to ask you some bigger questions, and I, I will. But um, just for you, in these few days that you've kind of had a sigh of relief, or you know, know that you've been done. Has anything come up for you? Has have have you been able to you know look back or ponder or gain any wisdom from from what you've gained from your career? Um. Well, I had this question just straight after my last competition. Um, I think where I'm the most proud of is that I always uh, I was not scared to 
to reflect myself and to ask others to help me reflect on myself. Um, I think this was like, uh, yeah, the way to do it for me. And um, so I always kept looking for how to do better as a person and as a swimmer. And I was never scared of the ugliness that comes out from that sometimes. Um, so I think there's not, I, I, I would not say one medal, but I mean, if you ask me to save one from the fire, of course it would be Beijing. And I, I have uh, warm memories from Doha. And I'm also very proud that I became European champion in Budapest uh, this year. Um, yeah, because uh, I felt I was doing everything I, I could possibly do to, yeah, to be the, the best swimmer and also the best person I could be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, so let's get down to, you know, some of these races or medals. First of all, you, you mentioned this before you always stepped up for relays from, from an outsider perspective, like you were the relay queen, you know, right. You just, you, you have these amazing splits so consistently over your career. Um, how, how do you view that? Um, or how do you view yourself or your um, perspective when you step up for a relay? Mm, yeah, it's a big question I asked myself as well, because uh, uh, many times I was faster in the split than I was able to do in an uh, individual race. I think uh, uh, relays just suits more my character. I'm a giver and I care about other people. And um, I think also in the beginning, I felt safer in a relay because uh, there are just three girls around you that want you to swim the fastest you've ever done. And in the individual final, you're in the call room with seven other girls that don't particularly want you to swim your best ever race. Uh, and it's not that the call room vibes are bad. I mean, I mean, those girls are all lovely, but it's just different energy uh, than when you have three teammates around. So I think in the beginning, that was definitely uh, the safety that I felt. And then, yeah, I think it's just in my character a little bit that uh, I give. And I'm happy that I um, I learned to to put it in my individual races as well. Do, do you, from a physical standpoint, do you feel like you have a really good relay start or a relay swing compared to your flat start? Yeah, I just, I don't know. It's uh, it's so weird because I feel like I, I keep so much momentum of the dive and um, uh, yeah, my first 50, I can open so fast and easy and it's not feeling the, the speed I'm making. So Maybe it's the dive. I don't know. Maybe it's just, uh, yeah, it's, I still don't figure it out completely, but, uh, the dive definitely helps me. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've, I've always been curious about that and just with a lot of swimmers, you know, uh, their, their flat start versus their relay swing and, and how, like you said, you carry momentum off of that. Um, so then also one aspect of your career that I think stands out a lot is that you're, 34 now, you know, you've, you've, and you've been able to maintain a really high level of success in the pool for over a decade. Um, but you only started going to international meets when you were 16, 17. Yeah. In 2005, I think I was 17. Yeah. 17. Okay. So not to say that that's old, but I think, you know, a lot of females athletes who are really good in swimming, um, get, go to, go to the international stage sometimes when they're 13, 14, 15. Um, but you went to your first international meet at age 17. Um, you didn't win, um, you know, your first Olympics, you were 19, 20. Yeah. 20, 20. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. And so it, it seems like, I don't, I don't know if late bloomer is the right phrase, but how would you, how would you describe your earlier progression in the pool? Um, do you feel like you got really fast at a young age or do you feel like you were still learning a lot in your teen years? Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't think I'm a late bloomer, but maybe something in between. Um, so I was scouted when I was 13 yeah, I was 13, I got scouted and I was swimming at a very small club uh, in my hometown. I swam like three times a week and these practices were 45 minutes and one hour. So it's like <laughs> not so much swimming. And then I remember I swam like a local competition and I swam the qualification time for Dutch nationals. And I didn't even know what that was. 
for juniors. <laughs> for juniors. And then okay. uh, the mom of a concurrent, she called me, said, yeah, did you know you made the, the cut for the, the national juniors? Like, what's that? And so she explained me. And then I found out that I uh, went, could go to Dutch nationals. And that was the competition where I got scouted. So then I went to uh, a, a slightly bigger club uh, in a town, in a city near uh, near my hometown. And that's when it really started to, to grow and progress. So I, I, I made huge time drops because I started training uh, for the first time maybe in my life. So... Uh, so that really helped. And then, um, yeah, it, it went like like this in the beginning. And then when I was uh, 19, I made the, uh, the step to train with Martin Truyens in Amsterdam. And then I felt like the serious work was really going. So from that point of view, I think I'm a late bloomer, but uh, I just maybe, yeah, 17 is not old, like you said, so. So not a real late bloomer. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's really interesting that at 13, you're swimming three times a week for <laughs> an hour at a time. Um, and so maybe, I mean, mentally, maybe I feel like you, you might've come later than some, you know, again, a lot of swimmers, they're competing on their club teams at age nine, 10, 11. However, um, did you have any other sports or hobbies activities that you were doing around that time at age 13? Oh uh, yeah, I played water polo, hmm. and and I uh, I was doing ballet. Uh, so, but like, yeah, just on low low key things. Uh, so, uh, but then um, the ballet sessions and the swimming they were at one point they were at the same time, and then my mom said like, no, stop, quit the dancing, it's nothing for you, just stick with swimming. <laughs> like, okay, okay, mom. <laughs> so I stick, I stick with swimming, and uh, I think she was right. <laughs> Um, so I, so I am curious, you know, when you, especially when you first started swimming and you went from three practices a week to actually training and, um, all that, did you really enjoy swimming? Like the actual, did you enjoy the training and the practices? And I mean, you know, for some people that can be pretty monotonous and hard, but did, did you enjoy that at the beginning and through your teenage years? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. And especially at that moment when I was scouted, my parents were in divorce. So that was quite hard for me personally. And I was not like a very confident kid. So that someone saw something in me uh, that I was good at was very important for me, I guess. Uh, So I was like very eager to, to show my mom, my dad and my coach that I, that I could do something Mm. like good. So I think that, that, um, that really helped my eagerness, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, throughout, let's just say those earlier years when you were, like you said, your progression was just going, going, going. Um, and then in, even into your early twenties, did, did that love always stay? Was there a period where you ever didn't like swimming as much? No, the only period when I didn't like uh, swimming that much was after Rio. Uh, because my, like I said, I was overtrained. I had three injuries and uh, I was so uh, desperate that I just wanted, at some point, I just didn't care about swimming ever fast again, but I just wanted to feel like smooth in the water again. And that was totally gone. So at that point, that was a big struggle and I didn't enjoy going to practice because I knew it would take so long for me to finally have a nice session (laughs) where where it felt good but uh, I always loved going to practice um, like no one ever had to encourage me to go to practice I yeah it's something I just love to do uh, so I think I'm lucky with that maybe that's why I could keep going for so long and that's also why when that changed after Tokyo I knew this was real because I have such a big love for this sport and if me if I don't like to go to practice anymore something serious is going on <laughs> can't argue with that. (laughs) Um, so when you were, when you were a younger kid or when you were first coming up in in the sport, you know, teenage years again, um, was there a swimmer or athletes you looked up to? I mean, did you, were you a fan of the sport as well? Um, especially once you got into it and kind of started rising through the ranks. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, so I swam the Dutch, Dutch nationals juniors, uh, in 2000. So you can imagine I was uh, hooked to the television uh, at the Sydney Olympics 
And uh, I remember um, uh, Inge de Bruyne winning the 100 fly. And in the Netherlands, they made like a, a little video of her, uh, slow motion with beautiful comment, comments and uh, music of Moby with porcelain. And it was just, it was so beautiful. Like, even if I think about like, it was so beautiful. And I, I felt like, wow, one day one, they make a video of me one day like that. And I think that performance of her and also Peter uh, really, um, like how do you call it when when you do this with the uh, with uh, the fire sticks? Oh, uh, like a match, like lit a fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like this lit the fire inside of me for Olympics, and from from that day on, I was like hooked with Olympics. Like, wow, Olympics, Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I I I forgot how, especially at that Olympics, how dominant Dutch swimmers were, and um, yeah. especially those two great ones. Wow, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> um, so the year, like you said, your only down period was that post Rio and you wanted to feel smooth again in the water. Sorry, I'm jumping around a little bit here, but how long did it take you to feel smooth in the water after that? Like, do you remember the first time it happened? Um, no, but I remember I was uh, hesitating about going to Worlds in, uh, in Budapest in 2017. Mm-hmm. And my practice were going from smooth to not smooth, like it was going up and down. And I remember actually just right on time in the, just the warm up for the heats of the four by one, I felt really good. And I told myself like, well, maybe this is going to be okay. <laughs> and I actually saw a really good meet and we won a bronze medal with the four by one, which was a uh, uh, great for, for our team. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think, uh, yeah, for at least one year, it's uh, it took me yeah man that's a long time and that's a especially coming off of an olympics did you take a, an extended break right after rio yeah i i took a break and um and i went to uh i i, I went to the hospital with the uh, how do you say like a top sport doctor mm-hmm. and so i spent like one day and we just checked everything and then uh from that day on i started rebuilding and he really saved he saved my uh and yeah like my career almost and i know i i did the effort myself but uh his name is uh, peter and he really um yeah like gave me the, the the right instructions to build back up and uh i'm so i'm very grateful that that he showed up in my life and um um uh, so what was i explaining i forgot uh, just after Rio, coming back oh, and, I, and the break. Oh, yeah, the break, yeah. So I uh, I went to Tahiti uh, oh, with uh, some French swimmers, and Sarah Schoesser was there, and also Natalie Coughlin. And uh, so my former teammates from Marseille were there, and it was amazing. It was like a, a swimming experience trip and basically a holiday, but it was it was amazing. And then I went to Iceland with Sebastian Verschuren. He's a good friend of mine. A, for, a former Dutch swimmer and it was a very spontaneous action like we had a coffee and he was saying like, yeah I'm gonna go to Iceland and I said like, oh I also want to go to Iceland one day and he said well why don't you join me like okay okay yeah why not and then we spent like five days driving around and so I enjoyed doing that kind of stuff and then after that I smoothly or not smoothly <laughs> I wish it was smoothly but slowly got back uh, back to it back to it what was this Tahiti trip with Sarah and Natalie? Like you, you guys just planned it and it was just like a fun thing. No, it was a, I forgot his name. I'm sorry if you're watching this. Uh, it was a, a guy from Tahiti and he organized uh, this trip for uh, some French swimmers and they wanted to like create more attention for swimmer swimming in that in Tahiti itself. Mm-hmm. And uh, so basically the guys in Marseille said, well, if you need another girl, just ask Fem because she speaks French and she's fun. And then uh, he also asked Natalie and Sarah because they are just very amazing swimmers. And yeah, I don't know how, how we actually ended up there, but uh, yeah, um, Stefan, his name is Stefan who organized this trip. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds cool. <laughs> yeah, that- so cool. <laughs> Those, those sound like great holiday items. Um, definitely. And then, so then, so, uh, you, you finally ended up feeling good a year later at the world champs. 
Um, one question I did want to ask is just throughout your career, you know, it can be big or small. Was there um, a meet that stands out to you as like, this is when you felt best in the water, whether you went best times or not, like, was there one meet or, or a period where you were like, I was, I was the most on I've ever been. Uh, I think short course, it was uh, Doha. Uh, mm. because I felt I, I was very stable I just had to do this and I swam like 51 low and um, and I remember in the semi-final of the 100 free I just like eased a little bit into the finish the last 25 and uh, I checked the, the scoreboard and I was like oh okay I'm, I was first and then I checked again oh I swam a PB and that for me was a sign that I was really in the process and um also in the final, I, I had like a very good race, like tactical and almost like even split uh, wise. Uh, so I think my stroke was really good at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, and like a few months later, I swam uh, my best times in the 100 free and the 200 free long course that are unfortunately still my best times. <laughs> um, and uh, I think uh, in Budapest, uh, this year at Europeans, hmm. I was very uh, stable and I was not rested like I wanted to be rested at the Olympics. But yeah, I just energy wise, I was doing, yeah, it was my best meet almost, I think. Yeah. Nice. And uh, when you say Doha, was that short course worlds in 2014? Yeah. Okay. Just, just to clarify. Uh, nice. <laughs> uh, so those were the meets where you, you felt most, uh, you know, the best, um, throughout your career, you know, you went to a lot of, uh, big meets and we were talking about what swimming meant to you or, or, or what it was like when you were a teenager, um, did what you valued from your career or in the sport change over time? Um, what, what you, what you were working for, or what you feel like you were getting out of swimming? Um, did that change from when you were a teenager to when, you know, you went into your twenties and eventually into your thirties as well? Uh, I think in the beginning, um, I felt that if I swam bad, I was a bad person almost. So that's what I meant with, I, I totally took that loss as a, yeah, like, like really deep inside of me. And I think throughout the years, I really learned that not everything is bad uh, and uh, um, that I just need to look at that I gave my best. And of course, that I, I have room for improvement. So there's also room for mistakes because I'm not perfect. And I think throughout the years, I, I, I really took that to heart. And um, in the end of my career, like I said before, I felt like I am... Um, I understood that I just wanted to feel free instead of, yeah, it sounds maybe a bit, um, uh, how do you say that, uh, like spiritual or something, but sure. um, it, it just really changed everything for me because it, it, made, it made it so much lighter for me. And I knew if I just wanted to look back at me that I was happy. And of course I wanted to perform, but I really understood that I, should feel free to perform so i think uh th yeah that's what i learned throughout the year so that definitely changed yeah mm -hmm. do you do you feel like there are specific things you'll miss from from swimming yeah yeah i'm gonna miss the like the, the adrenaline i'm gonna miss the races i'm gonna miss to to feel in shape and and feel so strong in the water i'm definitely gonna miss that i'm gonna miss the moment in the call room where, where you're with the uh, with the other girls and uh, and you know there's no way back um yeah that's that and i'm gonna miss being being part of a group i i, I think uh I've, i swam for the national team for 20 years and now i'm not part of them anymore and they're for example today they fly to abu dhabi and i see they're going there and and it's totally fine because i don't want to be there but still it's it was my life and now I'm not, I don't belong to those people anymore in this, in, in that kind of way. Like, uh, I, I need to pay for my massages from now on. I, I need to get <laughs> back my car. Uh, yeah. If I, if I want to 
train I, I need to buy a ticket to go in the pool and you know it's just that's something that's different and I, and I think that's maybe at one day maybe I, I find it a little bit hard um, but I'm 100% sure of this decision but I think that th those things are are different and I'm gonna miss yeah working working for something so hard and so long that it, and then achieve something you dreamed of and I'm just curious if I'm going to find something that gives me the same emotions and the same happiness as uh, swimming always did. Yeah. That brings up an excellent point. And I think a good one to, you know, wind down or end on is uh, what is next for you? You know, do you, do you have, this comes up for athletes a lot, right? Is, is what's after my sport. Um, do you have any, any plans for what you're going to do with your life next? Uh, so at first I want to take some months off. Mm -hmm. So at, at least till um, March, I just want to enjoy my life and just spend some time with family and just relax and do whatever I want. Uh, because I know myself, if I uh, uh, have a job right straight away, I'm going to dive in, in there and still don't have time to relax. Um, so I'm going to do that. And I did a master in coaching in 2019 and I would love to be uh, like sort of mental coach for younger athletes. Um, and I don't know, just want to do something back for the swimming because uh, I still really love this sport. So yeah, I'm still thinking about it and I'm, I'm not scared that I'm not going to find something uh, as a job. I don't feel big enough to, to work as a waitress if I need money. So I think this mindset really helps me to just, find something that's going to be good for me at some point. <laughs> that, that seems like a great mindset. <laughs> um, have, do you, like you said, you've been on the national team for 20 years. Have you ever had another job or have you ever, you know, had some sort of working experience? You said you got a master's in coaching. Um, have you had experience to, to kind of, you know, dip your toe in of like, Oh, I might like this, or I might like that. Not really. So uh, I did junior uh, Europeans in 2002 and 2003. And then 2004, I uh, didn't qualify for the Olympics. Uh, so then I was a waitress. <laughs> so that's the only work experience I have. And my, my dad has a own restaurant uh, and we used to live upstairs. So I know how, yeah, that's the only like work experience I have. But uh, no, I, I didn't do any other jobs. No. Yeah. But regardless, you feel pretty good about where you're headed now. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I think it's, it's going to be hard uh, because I, I need to reinvent myself, I guess. Um, and also I'm not going to be expect, expected at the pool or somewhere else. So I, I, it's going to be, has to come from me, only from me. So uh, that's going to be exciting. Um, but I'm, I'm confident that I, that I'll found something that will give me joy. And maybe I have to look for something that gives me as much or more joy than swimming, but, uh, I'm not in a hurry. So, well, Femke, I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down and, and chat about your career and your retirement. And I feel like you've presented us with quite a bit of wisdom. So I really appreciate hearing your perspective on it. Oh, that's nice to hear. Thank you for, uh, for having me. Absolutely. Any, any parting thoughts before we sign off today? Sorry, any what? Any parting thoughts? <laughs> any, uh, anything did we miss or, or any advice for our listeners? Oh, uh, no, I think, well, the thing that really helped me as an athlete is, is, is self-reflection. And uh, uh, I, I use swimming as my uh, education, basically. So that, that was the way that, to express myself and yeah, I did, and just enjoy it. It's the most. It's it sounds lame, but it's so important to. Uh, if you once lose the the, the joy, uh, you know that you you really need to have the joy in what you do. So, that's the the main advice I can give you. <laughs>